Hey everyone, welcome back, Professor Hank here. So today we're gonna to talk about the if else statement in C++. And the big idea behind this thing is that the decision structure will conditionally execute either option A or option B. So let's see how this works by writing a couple of sample programs. And the first thing we have to know is what the basic syntax is of this. And it looks like this, you've got a if keyword, and then you're gonna have some kind of test expression. And then if that test expression is true, then you'll execute the first set of statements, call it option A, right? In our intro, we called it option A. And it's just a statement or block of statements. Otherwise, we'll use this keyword else. We're gonna execute option B, what we refer to as option B, which is just gonna be a statement or block of statements. So if this test expression is true, we're gonna execute this block and then skip the else part. But if it's false, then we will skip this first block and execute the else part. So let's take a look at what that can look like by writing a program that will determine if a number is even or odd. Now, when you're determining if a number is even or odd, you just divide that number by two. And if there's a remainder, then it's odd. If there's no remainder, if the remainder is zero, then it's even. So we'll ask the user for a number, enter a number, and then we'll store their response in an integer variable, which we will call number. And then we'll do our little if else decision structure here. If number modulus two, because remember modulus finds the remainder. So if the remainder is zero, then it's gonna be an even number. So we'll tell the user, see how you entered an even number. So that's the our option A, right? Else, we'll tell them, see out, you know, you entered an odd number. So this is the first possibility. This is the second possibility. And then after that, we'll say, you know, have fun or, or, or we'll say, uh, you know, see out, have fun, okay? And so if this is true, if the remainder is zero, we print out you entered an even number, we skip the else part, and then we continue on with the program. If this is false, then we skip this first part, and then we print out the else part, and then we continue on with our program. So let's test both of those possibilities. Let's test for option A and option B. For branch A and branch B, so 10, if you divide that by two, is gonna give you zero. And so that's gonna cause the test expression to evaluate the true. And you can see that we print out you enter an even number, skip over the else part, and we display have fun. So let's test an odd number. So we'll enter in five, five divided by two has a remainder of one. So that's gonna cause that test expression value to false, and that's gonna skip the first option, option A, the, the C out unit and even number, and that's gonna to go to the else. And then after that's printed out, we'll go to the uh, C out have fun. So let's see another example of this. Let's say that we wanted to divide two numbers, okay? And we wanted to prevent dividing by zero. So what we'll do is we'll ask the user for the first number, then we'll ask for the second number, and then we'll check if the second number is uh, zero because you can't divide by zero. If it is, we'll print out an error message. Otherwise, we'll do the division and you know print out the quotient, and then we'll print out you know goodbye at the very end. So what's that going to look like? We'll have two integer variables, num one and num two, and then we'll say enter the first number. We'll store the response. See in num one, we'll ask for the second number, enter the second number, and we'll store the response. And then in our test expression, we'll check num two. So we'll say if num two is equal to zero. If that's true, that's bad, right? Because we can't divide by zero. So we'll print out some kind of error message. We'll say, you know, error uh, can't divide by zero. And then we'll say uh, C out, um, try again. Uh, otherwise, else, We'll go ahead and do the division. So we will do um, double quotient, and we're gonna make it a double so that way we can store any decimal places. And then we'll do um, quotient equals num1 times 1.0, so that way we avoid integer division divided by num2. And then we'll print out the answer. See out, your quotient is, and then we'll say quotient. And then that'll be that. So now let's go ahead and print out goodbye at the end. That way we can better illustrate, you know, how this block will get skipped or this block will get skipped. Either this is gonna execute or this will execute, but not both. So this is 
option A up here, and this is option B. One of these is going to execute. It's all going to be based off of whether this is true or false. If it's true, option A executes, and option B gets skipped, and then goodbye executes. If this is false, then option B executes, skipping option A, and then we execute, say so goodbye. So remember, we got two possibilities here. So we have to make sure that we test uh, both uh, possibilities. So we'll start off by trying to divide five by zero. Okay, so you can see error, can't divide by zero. Try again, goodbye, because this was true. So we printed out this, we executed this, skipped the else, and then we printed out the goodbye. So now let's try to divide five by two. Okay, so we see that your equation is 2.5 and the goodbye. So what happened? The num2 equals equals zero is false because num2 contained two. So the first block gets skipped and then this, the else part executes, option B executes. We figured out what the quotient was. We displayed the message, the else block was done. We did our see out goodbye and then that was that. Okay, so now you know the basics of how to use an if else statement to conditionally execute one statement or block of statements or the other. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.